Hey guys, my orchard videos. Well, we got an interesting project coming up from a very good friend of mine. And what you're looking at here is a chassis from a uh, one ton uh, overseas gray market mini excavator. A friend of mine was using his, he bought one brand spanking new. He went down, I guess, down the coaster and bought one. And he was doing doing some digging, and he rolled the machine on himself. Very, he was very very lucky. Open cab machine. He wasn't wearing a seat belt. If he was, it wouldn't be a very good sight. He he caught the hell out of that damn thing before it almost crushed him. The machine is very narrow itself. It's a, I think it's about three foot uh, wide maybe a bit more and um, it's too damn narrow and it's very unstable I ran it I like the machine myself I like to buy one for myself identical to what he has and it's very powerful and it does everything I wants to do to it but I found it to be very 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 unstable about as unstable as my skid steer but anyways um, now the issue we have is it just it's uh the tracks are very narrow and we, when you have the boom i put my put my pointer here you have the boom like this across like this you're digging like this this track on this side wants to come up on you all the time and what, what happened to him is digging on the bank and he rolled that son of a bitch and uh not pretty he bent the cab up on it and um, of course it runs and everything and everything but the cab is bent so we need to take that off and straighten it so he says to me says to me well i know you bought a new mig welder and i know you're good with welding and such and uh, he wants me to modify the chassis and he knows like i like inventing stuff and doing all sorts of different things and i said to him well i'll find uh see if i can find a picture online and we can go from there and see what we can do so I talked about it and hummed and hawed about it and uh, we come up with a solution or well, actually my idea to do this now this modification is not for the faint of heart this is a modification you need to do to the machine it will save your life guaranteed so what you need to do with the machine is you need to take it all apart Cut the welds on these cross members. Take this mem cross member here out and the top one, the plate. Take it all apart. Cut the welds off. And there's a cross. There's a little member in the front here for the sewing. You take that out. And these, you have to cut out these two, because you, be you have to relocate these mounts here. Uh, this is for the uh, blade, the front. So, anyways, you got to cut this chassis right down the middle. And you got to add on material. You have to put a piece of tube on the inside. All right inside of that and expand it out so you need to measure how wide you want to make the machine across the back i would say four and a half feet five feet across the back i mean um, i mean like the track the track width machine width as like i say about four foot four and a half foot five foot depends on what you want i would go uh, about four and a half feet i'd be very very comfortable with that so, I mean, you want to take it one foot, you want to take it, uh, you even a little more, yeah, you know, uh, that'd be about right. I would do it about exactly what the Kubota uses, like the uh, 1.8 ton. I'd go about uh, four foot three inches on that. So, that's what I would do. And that's that's what we agreed, my friend. We talked about going four feet, and I think that's what we're going to be doing on his machine. So, four feet is more than plenty for the machine. This gives you a little more stability. We might go, I might adjust that a bit. I like to maybe go a little bit wider, maybe to four and a half feet. You know, but you got to do this correctly. So. You put a tube in here, inside this one here. I'm not too sure what size of tubing they use. 
other machines I'm, I'm, my shirt is you use like eighth inch or quarter inch whatever it is you gotta match it up with the tube on the inside put a tube on the inside you wall a sucker up plate it real good on both sides do a real nice job and you wall everything back on and wall it up real nice and pretty and you have all your make sure everything's nice and perfect and straight which it should be and you have to relocate these brackets for the uh, blade somewhere in here I'm not too sure where you're you, you have to take measurements before you cut these off take all the measurements you need so you so you know where to locate them it's not a big deal it's, a, it's not rocket science so um, I mean this is a modification that's going to save you uh, either life or death no joke I mean I have ran excavators all my life and this particular one I was using it uh, digging from the side like my friend did and that son of a bitch wanted to come up off that one track wanted to come off of the ground and there's no fucking way this thing part of my language there's no way this thing is going to come off the ground like this on me we got to modify this thing so it's stable so um, that's the solution so uh, I mean you're going to, I mean, when you do this modification, you're going to come up with problems with the hoses might be too short or whatever. So what? You add a couple of little pieces in there that you need to add, maybe add a couple of new hoses, big whoop de do. I think there's enough slack in the hoses, which you can, uh, well, probably won't be enough slack, but you have to check it out for yourself. There might be enough slack in the hoses where you don't have to add, but adding... You know three four inches of hose here and there is not a big deal considering so i've heard a guy saying oh we bought this machine and it was too narrow and stable so we upgrade to a bigger one you don't have to do that you just trip the machine down and you do exactly what i told you to do here either if you have to make if you have the welding skills you can do this yourself or very inexpensively or take it to a friend who has welding skills or to go to a shop and they'll do a perfect job for you so either way but this is a modification that uh, you know the name brand machines like the, you go to like up to a two ton machine a 1.8 ton machine like Kubota or whatever it is the tracks expand out okay these tracks expand which makes it safe narrow for going through uh, tight areas and widen it out when you're working I don't know why these guys don't do this on these uh, over like, over this overseas machines or gray market however you want to say it it's a safety issue and they should widen these damn things out or make it so they widen in and out so but I mean when you're spending ten thousand dollars on a machine I mean you gotta modify it to what you feel like it and I don't think uh, from what I've seen uh, the one uh, the uh, they call it I don't know there's different models it goes from 0 0.08 and up and I've seen the chassis different different pictures and they look all the same to me they don't look much any more wider or narrow anything basically from uh, 0 0.08 right to 1.5 maybe 1.8 the chassis are all identical you know probably a little bit of difference uh, I think the 1.8 the, cha the chassis change a bit because they narrow they go they, have, they expand the tracks, ex tracks expand in and out but there's no need to expand to a bigger machine it's total ludicrous to be doing that spend enough money to buy the machine you want to make it safe so this is a really um, loot and crude up, uh, upgrade I mean it's safe it's a safety issue um, but you know you have to do what you have to do and my friend has faith in me that we can do this uh, properly and safely and uh, you know when I buy my own machine God willing next year not this year but next year there's no point buying it now and I, I, well I can order one now by the time it shows up it will be next year <laughs> so um, I'm gonna buy identical machine to his identical but there's a lot of modifications these machines need to make them the way you want it okay you the price is right at ten thousand dollars for one-ton machine you can do just about any modification you want to this machine 
and it's just as good as any name brand but uh, something I gotta do say is you could buy a machine like this I would opt to get the gasoline engine the diesels are good but uh, if the motor blows you can go to your Harbor Freight or Princess Auto here in Canada get a 13 horse motor or 14 horse motor for 500 bucks or 600 maybe a thousand at the most stick it in there and all the parts you use in these machines they're all simple they're simple they're simple machines they're simple built I mean they're heavy duty no electronics and they're all uh, they're all built in a fa in a manner that anybody can basically fix a damn thing they're lewd and crude and they're simple and easy to work on simple just plain as that so anyways I thought I'd post up a little video on that uh, when my friend gets the chassis of his machine we're going to be bringing that into the shop here uh, I don't know how heavy it is probably have to do it uh, put on with a tractor or something loader forklift whatever he has there we'll be doing the same thing here and we're trying to do this step by step to show you guys exactly how this is done so um it should be pretty interesting to see this uh project up and going and uh you know it's uh, definitely a uh, definitely a a well needed upgrade for the one ton machine anyways if you find this video interesting please uh subscribe comment and share my videos and uh come back and what come back for new updates and new videos on my channels this video will be posted on both of my channels at the my orchard videos and george's dump trucking and excavating vlogs thanks for watching bye for now